Jake Hamilton, Fox Chicago. Chicago! Chicago! All right, Midwest, all right. Good to see you, sir. Good to see you, too. How are you? Um, I gotta be honest, I'm watching this movie last, last night, and I feel like you were born to play this part. You're a man from Hawaii who grew up in the Midwest. You didn't really fit in either place. You were picked on and bullied as a kid. I'm curious if you could go back to 10-year-old you, after you've been picked on, after you've been bullied, grab yourself by the shoulders and say, one day you will be a superhero. How would you have said it to yourself, and what do you think you would have said? Jeez. Um... I don't even know what I'd say. That it's, it's just such a surreal place where I'm at right now compared to where we where I grew up in in Norwalk, Iowa. But I think I would just tell myself to don't stress. It's, everything's going to be okay. Everything's going to be just fine. So on the flip side of that coin, if you could talk to the bullies that picked on you when you were a kid, what would you say to them? You know what? I met them and I was just really nice to them, and uh, they're really nice to me now. And I think just people, you know. We're all a bit vulnerable and we, we cover up certain things and we're cruel because people were cruel to us and so I don't really, uh, I was nice to them. Yeah, good for you, man. Yeah. Dude, a class act. Yeah. Uh, I know that originally you had auditioned for Batman and I'm curious yeah. as to how that audition went, what your approach to Batman was and was there anything in that audition that maybe you took to Aquaman? Yeah, I kind of visualized because it was a generic kind of just general scene from uh, Christian Bale, Mo The F Dark Knight. And I just, it was a big casting call, so I knew a lot of people were gonna be doing it, and I just felt like it was a booby trap, and I didn't wanna do it. So I knew I was gonna get hired for Batman. Agents like, do it. So we did it, and I just pretended like Batman got killed in an alleyway, and I picked it up and tried to play him as, like I was just down and out, poor, over it, just done wrong, and he wasn't afraid to punch people even good people in the face and he just didn't I just played him completely opposite That's actually kind of badass though I would it, like to see that and just go like not un, unforgivable about yeah. certain things but also like flawed like a, a kind of person who would just jump off the cliff and then figure it out on the way down what yeah. we're gonna do yeah. that kind of guy so, I like that so they like that and then I got called in about probably two three weeks later and that's when Zach laid it down and said yo I want you to play Aquaman which was like completely, excuse me, yeah. like, you should be playing. <laughs> and I'm like, and uh, then they look at me and they go, no. Which is, no. It's, it's just, but it, then when he told me his vision, you know, what he wanted to do with the tattoos, someone who comes from, the, you know, being a Polynesian, half, you know, half white, half Polynesian, it's, it's uh, it made sense going like, wow, it's, it's a really neat um, idea about that. So It's a great angle. Yeah. I gotta tell you, we have a guy that works at uh, my station in Chicago at Fox, Steve Donald. He grew up obsessed with Aquaman. In fact, not only did he, I gotta show you these pictures, not only did he uh, dress as Aquaman as a child, he also dressed it as him as an adult. You are his absolute favorite. So I'm curious, on a scale from one to Aquaman, what would you give Steve Donald? Because he has been auditioning for this part essentially his entire life. He's a 10, man. He's a 10. He's a 10, buddy. You give him a 10. That's, that's, uh, that's, I mean, that's just the love. I, I love, here's the thing. I go to a lot of these comic cons and I meet people who are just, that was their hero. Yeah. And I always, you know, even when I step into those shoes, same thing like Conan, people are like, oh, I love, I love Arnold and this. And like, I'm going to do my version of it. I, I hope it's within the, to all respects of, uh, of the Aquaman fans and it doesn't come down to color and that and hopefully yeah. we portray him right and and the truth of it is like his Aquaman is not the Aquaman we play I'm not there yet you know what I mean we haven't right. got to I just become the king of Atlantis so are you gonna dye your hair blonde and then cut it short and well you never know you I don't know you stay in the water for that much longer maybe it goes blonde yeah. I used to look I, like you and then I just shriveled up because of the chlorine and all the salt and everything I grabbed the trident my eyes went gold who knows what's gonna happen who knows what's gonna happen Aquaman 2 man Electric Boogaloo I'm excited and honor sir thank you so yeah, much for this man, movie truly it's a fantastic movie Amber good to see you again yeah, likewise. You know, what I love about this part is that Mira isn't the female counterpart to Aquaman she's not Aqua Girl it's not, it's not like a Supergirl or a Batgirl situation she's her own person whenever you get this script and you crack it open, what are the things that you're looking for that you're assuming are going to be there that make you go, I'm not going to do this? Well, speaking to your point, I think when I first got the call about wanting to possibly doing this part, I was very, let's say I was very reluctant. Mm -hmm. I was very skeptical because I, out of ignorance and really not knowing this world very well, I had, I was not familiar with it. I had a vague impression of really just 
a vague impression of how women are represented in this world, especially. If the impression being that of a hyper-sexualized, two-dimensional uh, uh, character, that the kind, the likes that, of which, uh, I guess, the imagination of a 14-year-old boy uh, could, um, you know, work right. out, and all of that dimension. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it, naturally, it didn't seem like it was for me. And I talked to Zach on the phone, Zach Snyder, who directed Justice League, right. and he said, you know, my, this was just going to introduce my part for Aquaman to follow. And he said, no, 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 this is just not that woman. This is a badass, kick-ass superhero. She, I mean, she's a fighter, she's a warrior queen, and frankly, I like the idea of a sword and a crown. Yeah. So I read the comic books, and so I crack open the comic book, and right out of the gate, first scene I really meet Mira in is she saves this town and the townspeople are picking themselves up and one mistakenly refers to her as Aqua Woman. Wow. And she stops in her tracks, turns around and corrects. She's like, uh-uh, no, no. I have a name. <laughs> I have a name. Right. I own name. Right. I'm not Aqua Woman. My name is Mira. And I was like, I like this. Done. I like Sold. it. Sold. Love that. You know, because we live in the age of Mera and the age of, of Wonder Woman and, and the women in Black Panther, there are so many young girls growing up who are going to have someone to look up to and dress up as for Halloween, these strong, independent female characters. Did you have that person? Who did you dress up as for Halloween? I... Who did I dress up? Okay, so the, I love I, I love dressing up. Yeah. I love, Clearly. Uh, yeah. I love a good dress up. I love a good, you know, um, I love to decorate and celebrate. Mm -hmm. But I um, I think this year, I think this year I was um, traveling or working, or uh, so I didn't really have time. Mm -hmm. And I and I remember trying to like scramble, thinking, what am I going to do to kind of pull together some sort of a, a costume? And I thought to myself. Like me being not in hair and makeup, I think I came from a set right af right before then. I, I I think I decided me being not in costume was was the, its own costume was the most dressing up right. I was gonna do. It was the most <laughs> the costume of me was the one I had put on the least this year. So I did that. Good for you. You earned <laughs> that. You earned that. And is there? I know you have to save Aquaman quite a few times in this movie. I save him, yeah. which I love. Are there any other members of Justice League that you'd love to shoot a scene in which you have to save them? You know what I, I I would I really would love to do um, I would I would love to do movies with um, I wouldn't I wouldn't want to save her I'd want to do a movie with Gal yes I would, and Wonder Woman yes um, but I would also really love to see women. Um, fill in extra spots. So we've seen a lot of these characters before. We've seen the Batmans and the Supermans and Spider-Man. We've seen the Flash. We've seen all of these characters before and some a lot for many years. I think it's time we have more women. So I'd like I'd like to see more women come from uh, emerge from the kind of more obscure pages of the DC comics and step up into roles of their own. Uh, oh, let's yeah. see let's see some more women take up uh, some space in the DC world. If that they're as cool. good as this, I think we're going to. So congratulations yeah, on this. Really, all the happiness in the world. Thank thanks. you so much, Patrick. Good to see you, sir. Good to see you. Man. You know uh, what? interest to me about villains in movies like this is whenever you hear their justification, their reasons for doing things, and then you go, I kind of get it. At least, yeah. I, at least I understand part of it. When yeah. you're playing someone that is on the evil side of this battle, yeah. do you have to try to justify their actions a little bit? Do you have to try to understand why they're doing what they're doing? 100%. If you don't, the, you know, the last, your first role, goal in playing any role, mm -hmm. really, is just there's no judgments. So just like I wouldn't judge somebody for whatever religion they were playing, right. orientation, whatever. Like, that's who the character is, it's what he believes in. Okay, so let's just go forward from there. I think what's fascinating about Orm is that, uh, is is because from the get-go, you, you learn that he is upset, angry, frustrated, whatever you want to call it, about the way the surface world has been destroying his oceans, our oceans, and you go... I get it, yeah. like you said. So, when you start from that place, it it you're you're on board, and you it can go as big and broad as you want, which it does in yeah, the movie. Yeah, very much um, so. But it's always rooted in a, in a very real place, and I also find it very fascinating that that you know all throughout Aquaman comics, Aquaman is 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 very much an eco warrior himself, and and helps fishermen, saves whaling, does all sort you know or fights whaling rather. Um, 
And uh, but I like that they left pollution up to Orm because I think it enables a little more of a violent response. Even if you don't like it, mm-hmm. I think kind of deep down, I think when you see and sort of shove everything back in in our face, I think a part of you goes, "Yeah, good for you." Yeah, yeah, well done, well done. Yeah. I was geeking out with you before we started rolling about Watchmen, which I think is yeah. one of the all-time great superhero films yeah, ever. Yeah, yeah. I always I argued ten years ago it was a little bit ahead of its time. Sure. I'm curious as to if you ever thought that, and what do you think that movie says about superhero movies now? Because I'd love to see it come out today right um i i you know you never it's it's interesting i uh i love that movie i love the process of it i have i will say i've watched it more or at least again recently mm-hmm. than i i you know it's not like i've watched it not like i watch it right, movies right. that i'm in really um but um it it does it holds up it oh, will always very hold well up. It very will always well. hold up, and I feel confident in saying that, and it will go down history as sort of a very seminal moment in, in comic book movies. Um, you know, as far as it being ahead of its time, those kind of things, I mean, it was it was at the time it was supposed to be, and, and, I, and I think fans will see that there's a long history of great movies mm-hmm. that, that either didn't get the reaction that, that, that you thought they did at the time they came out. Um, so uh, it's, it will stand the test of time. I think it has influenced a lot of... Of, of movies and certainly comic movies and um, you're always looking to push the envelope. I think even what James has done with this is it, it you, you, uh, every filmmaker wants to, you know, you don't want to see the same thing. You want to push it forward. We, we want to bring something new the, to the DC universe, which I think this movie does uh, hugely and that's no disrespect to any other movie. And I'm sure Patty Jenkins will say the same thing about Wonder Woman too. Yeah. I want to go even further. And that's, I think, something that Warner Brothers has done so well is hire these directors that are able to really embrace their vision. And then and, letting them do it and then say, and go nuts. I mean, that's, that's, that's what's happened here. Yeah. Yeah, without question. I got a thousand more questions, but I got to let the next guy come in. Really, an honor, man. Thank you so much for always good making great you. movies and movies worth talking about. Thank man. I really you, man. Appreciate I appreciate it. it. Good to James, good to see you again, sir. Good to see you. Uh, let me ask you, there are so many aspects of Aquaman, obviously they've been made fun of over the years, and rather than <laughs> ignore them, mm-hmm. you sort of took them and said, how do I make them cool? What was the hardest thing you had to take that was goofy and then make it cool? <laughs> um, I... I Th- there were many things. <laughs> it was yeah. the seahorse, wasn't it? Yeah, Be well, honest. I mean, that, that's exactly, I mean, the seahorse was one of them, you know, like, how, I'm like, how do I make the seahorses cool, and how can I, uh, you know, uh, get people to write these seahorses and actually still have uh, the audience take them seriously? Yep. Yeah. Um, just, you know, from a visual standpoint, uh, uh, you know, they may, may, you know, they, they you know, that, that's my job. My yep. job is to try and, um, you know, uh, kind of not shy away from uh, from all the stuff that people have laughed at this property in the past and actually just embrace it, embrace it and, and, and kind of just take it and, and just own it. But you say that's your job. I feel like a lesser director would have been like, ah, I'm just gonna, I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna bring in the suit. Right. We're gonna change Black Manta. We're gonna do like, right. but you said, no, this is the way it was created and this is yeah. the way we're gonna do it. And I respect that. Yeah, I, I really wanted to uh, respect the source material. Yeah. And, um, and you know, I feel like um, this is the, First time this guy, this character, and his world has has really been uh, adapted to the big screen to this level, and so I didn't want to just you know start throwing things out. Yep. I uh, I wanted to embrace it and uh, and give him his his chance his, in 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 the spotlight right. and uh, and really just sort of uh, kind of go with it, have fun with yep. him. Yeah. You uh, inherited a lot of stuff from Justice League and Zack Snyder, things that you had no control over. You said, okay, these are the certain things I've got to work with, and then you got to expand on. Right. What were some things that you inherited that you weren't a fan of, and what were some things you inherited that you thought, okay, cool, this is great, I can work with this? Well, I mean, obviously, the, the biggest element that I inherited was the casting of Momoa. Right. You know, and uh, which, you know, like, it truly was a stroke of genius on Zack's behalf, you know. Because uh, in theory, I should be playing Aquaman. If we're, if we're being accurate, <laughs> I'm a little right. offended that you didn't go for <laughs> the small frame blonde guy. A little offended by that, but that's cool, we'll move on. Uh, you're right, uh, but that's, that's the, I think, the, uh, the genius behind the casting is, uh, whatever jokes that people had uh, uh, of that particular guy and, and that classic sort of look just you know gets thrown out the window you know with the casting of Momoa himself and I mean Jason obviously brings his big larger than life persona to it and I feel like that's what this character needs you know right out the gate you need someone who's very strong and just comes in and makes a statement yeah. just Jason makes a huge statement yeah. and uh, and uh, my job is to um, take kind of like um, what people are familiar with with Jason, you know, I mean, everyone knows Jason is the big tough guy. And we all know he can play the strong, tough character, right? But what 
I wanted to do is show the other side of Momoa, the side that we've all seen behind the scene, which is he's very charming, very sweet and likable and, and, and goofy and funny yeah. at the same time. And, and I wanted to bring all those personality into this character and make Aquaman Jason Momoa. For sure. As we wrap up, I love watching Saw and seeing that movie <laughs> and thinking, the man that made that made Aquaman. That it just blows my mind. I'm curious, even though two completely different, different movies, different budgets, right. what did you learn on Saw that is still applied to Aquaman? Listen, I mean, what I ultimately, Aquaman is what, my ninth feature film right. now, and what I ultimately learned with each film I make is it doesn't matter um, what genre, genre your film is in, it doesn't matter how big scale, how small scale the film is, storytelling is storytelling. Yeah. It's all about creating characters that people care about, creating stories that people engage with, and so the process to me is the same. Well, you absolutely nailed it, man. As, as a fan, thank you for kicking ass awesome, in this movie. Jay. If they were smart, they will sign you for two, three, four, and five right now. <laughs> thank you. Thank you.